You know, all that health data out there? It's just full of hidden connections. And to find them, we have to think like detectives. So today, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're opening up the Health Detectives Toolkit to find these crucial clues. Every good investigation starts with a question. Something like, is there a link between a person's age and their blood pressure? Or maybe between a new treatment and how fast a patient recovers? These answers aren't just for textbooks. They can literally shape medical guidelines and, you know, improve our health. In the world of biostatistics, finding these connections is absolutely the critical first step. I mean, before we can figure out why something happens, we first have to know if two things are related at all. And for that, we use a very special tool called correlation analysis. So what is correlation? Well, you can think of it as our first, most crucial clue. It's a statistical measure that tells us how strongly two things are connected and in which direction. We're basically looking for a pattern, a sign that two sets of data are moving together in some predictable way. The main clue in this whole investigation comes down to a single number, the correlation coefficient, which we just call R. It's amazing, really. It summarizes the entire story of a relationship into one little value between negative one and positive one. And it gives us a ton of information just at a glance. So if R is zero, our clues lead absolutely nowhere. It means there's no linear connection between the variables. They're totally independent. And for our investigation, well, it's a dead end. But if R is positive one, we've hit the jackpot. This is a perfect positive correlation. As one variable goes up, the other goes up in perfect, predictable sync. They move together like two partners in a perfectly choreographed dance. And an R of negative one means they're perfectly opposed. As one goes up, the other goes down with that same perfect predictability. Now, in the real world, these perfect correlations are super rare. Most of our clues fall somewhere in between, which is why we have different tools to measure them. All right, let's look at our first tool. This is the Pearson correlation. I want you to think of it as a really precise measuring stick. It's a specialist tool, and it's perfect for very specific kinds of data. Pearson is your go-to tool when both of your variables are continuous, and that just means they can be measured on a scale with meaningful numbers. We're talking about things like age in years, weight in kilograms, or a patient's exact blood pressure reading, hard numbers. Let's check out a real-world case. Right here, we've got data from a study on hepatitis patients. We have their age in years and their bilirubin levels. See how both of these are precise numerical measurements? This is the perfect scenario to pull out our Pearson measuring stick. The analysis here reveals a moderate positive correlation. So what does that mean? The interpretation is key. It tells us that as the age of these patients goes up, their bilirubin levels also tend to rise. It's not a perfect relationship, of course, but it's a solid, significant clue that points us in the right direction. But hey, not all clues are so neat and tidy. Our detective kit needs another tool for the messier crime scenes the ones where we don't have those precise measurements. And that's where the Spearman correlation comes in. So what happens if our clues aren't precise numbers, but categories that have a natural order? This is what we call ordinal data. Think about a patient describing their pain as mild, moderate, or severe. We know the order, right? But there's no precise number. Pearson's measuring stick is totally useless here. And this is where Spearman's method is just so clever. It doesn't look at the raw values at all. Nope. Instead, it converts everything into ranks. It just lines them up from lowest to highest and gives each one a rank. Then it simply checks if the ranks for the two variables are correlated. For instance, let's say we rank patients by how severe their symptoms are, from mildest to most severe. Then we rank them again based on their satisfaction level, from lowest to highest. Now we can just compare these two lists of ranks and see if a pattern pops out. And in this example, the Spearman analysis finds a strong negative correlation. As the symptom severity rank goes up, meaning the symptoms get worse, the patient satisfaction rank goes down. So even without any precise numbers, our rank investigator found a clear, meaningful connection. Now, there's another rank-based tool called Kendall's Tau. It's actually often preferred for smaller data sets because it's less sensitive to errors. So while Spearman gave us a great clue, a really savvy detective might also run Kendall's analysis just to confirm the finding. Okay, so we've found some pretty strong clues with our tools, but every good detective knows the most important rule of any investigation. Finding a connection is not the same thing as closing the case, not even close. 
And that rule is this. Correlation does not imply causation. Just because two things happen together, it absolutely positively does not mean that one causes the other. This is a fundamental, non-negotiable principle in statistics. You have to remember this one. Here's a famous example to really hammer this home. There is a very, very strong positive correlation between ice cream sales and the number of drowning incidents. As ice cream sales shoot up, so do drownings. So does eating ice cream cause people to drown? Of course not. This is a classic spurious or misleading correlation. The real culprit here is a hidden third factor, what we statisticians call a confounding variable. In this case, it's hot weather, right? Hot weather makes people buy more ice cream, and hot weather also makes more people go swimming, which unfortunately leads to more drowning incidents. The hot weather is the true cause, creating this fake connection between ice cream and drownings. So let's recap our little investigation here. Correlation is a super powerful tool for seeing the strength and direction of a relationship. It's crucial to choose the right tool for the job, Pearson for that precise measurable data, and Spearman or Kendall for ranked data. But always remember, a correlation is just a clue. It's an invitation to dig deeper. It is not the final answer. You have to always be hunting for that hidden confounding variable. So the next time you see a headline claiming there's a link between two things, you can pull out your new detective's toolkit. Ask the right questions. Is the correlation positive or negative? What kind of data is it? And most importantly, what hidden factor might be telling the real story? So now that you have the tools, what hidden connections will you uncover?